2020 is here and I'm still using the same good old camera bag, which is the Low Pro 450. AW, I think it's called. I was this close to buying Peter McKinnon's backpack, but it was a little bit out of my budget at the time, so I'm gonna stick with this bag for probably one more year. One thing that I have done going into 2020 is trying to reduce the weight of my camera bag because like it did take a toll on my back and it was like getting way too heavy. So let's have a look what is actually inside here. I'm just gonna start out by saying that if you're new here to the channel, then you might want to consider hitting that subscribe button because, you know, that'd be highly appreciated. And to everyone else that has been here for a while, you guys rock. Okay, the first thing that I got in my camera bag is the most important thing, and that's gonna be my computer, my laptop, my editing uh, station, and my everything, basically, because this is the only computer that I have it's the only computer that I edit all my videos on, maybe for YouTube client work or anything else. So is like if if this was to break, then I'm kind of like I'm kind of screwed. This is a fully specced out MacBook Pro 15 inch from 2017, and I've been using this constantly ever since I bought it. And I gotta say, it's like probably one of the absolute best computers that I've used in my entire life. I've never had any issues, it's never crashed, and it has an SSD drive which makes it boot up really fast. And it is by far my most used tool that I got in my camera bag right now. Okay, now we got the computer out of the way. Let's see what we got here. We got a variable ND filter from JJC. This is something that I've talked about before, and I do think that these are actually quite good for the price that you pay. And the reason that I'm going for cheap ones is because I am way too clumsy to have like more expensive ones than these. Because when I'm running gunning, you know, shooting events and stuff like that, I usually like put this on my camera, and then if I don't need it, then just like put it down the pocket. And it's probably not the way to go, but like that is that is uh, this, yeah. I also have a circular polarizer if I need to take a photo of something that I don't want to have any reflections on. Maybe taking photos of cars or through the window or something like that. Maybe like a beautiful sunset on a really clear water. Barely use it, but I do have it in my bag just in case. Let's start from the top here. Ugh! I'm glad that wasn't lens. This is the uh, Sony W. Age 1000 MX3 noise cancelling headphones that I bought late last year and I really enjoy working with these. I edit all my videos with these on because you can actually plug them into your computer so when you're like editing and when you're on the train or on the airplane or something like that they can just like cut out all the background noise when you're sitting there editing so that is something that I highly like about these. We have a uh, dongle from a Swedish company that is called Del Taco. Super cheap one, but it basically gives me three USB ports and one SD card reader and also a micro SD card reader so that I can just like plug this in and then plug my SD cards in and then I can just import everything to the computer. Probably should buy more of these. I have two SSD drives from Samsung, which is the T5. SSD drive and these are something that I highly recommend you to have because working straight from these even if you're working with like 4k footage is gonna be flawless and you don't have to like actually import stuff into your computer and then I have these two which is from Western Digital and these are basically my backup drives if something were to happen to my main drives because if these were to break then I still have like one terabyte in total storage with these two if you're not using SSD drives yet I highly recommend to invest in that because then you don't have to worry about anything breaking or anything like that as compared to like a regular hard drive. Oh, the Sony a7 III that I'm recording this on right now. This is by far one of the best cameras that I've used in my entire career as a filmmaker, photographer, content creator, YouTuber, you name it. I really enjoy working with this camera. I like the form factor, the different kind of functions that is built in. What I don't like about the Sony cameras is the menu system because that is just like 
really hard to get into if you haven't used a Sony camera before. We also have the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus that I'm also recording this with right now. I highly recommend this microphone for anyone that wants to like start up their own YouTube channel or you know buy a really good shotgun mic for your camera because this microphone is the only microphone that I use here in my studio when I'm shooting any vlogs, when I'm shooting any kind of videos. I'm using this right now so and you can hear the audio it sounds Good, right? And the feature that I like the most about the microphone is that it turns on and off with the camera. So you don't have to worry that the microphone is not going to turn on or turn off. So that is a huge thumbs up. Let's get going. Tamron 2875 F2.8 Di3 or XD. <sighs> this has been a workhorse in my camera bag. I've been shooting so many events with this lens and I have been shooting a lot of YouTube videos. I'm shooting a lot of my B-roll with this and I've been shooting commercials, everything that you can shoot with this lens, I've been shooting with this lens. And in my opinion, I do think this is the lens to go for if you're just starting out with a Sony full frame mirrorless camera because you get so much out of this lens, the autofocus is super fast, image quality razor sharp. I mean, it's lightweight, it's super versatile because you can mount this onto a gimbal and then balance the gimbal at like 50 millimeters and then you can go all the way up to 75 and then back to 28 without having to rebalance the gimbal. So that is good. This is always in the bag. Portable light source, the Aperture ALMX, which is definitely a light that I highly recommend. It is super bright when you like hit the boost. It's great to have you with you if you're like in a hotel room and you want to shoot a vlog and you don't have enough lighting or something similar. Have a portable light source always in your bag because like it's not that big and it basically fits super easy into your bag. A 20,000 milliamp power bank that can charge my cameras like three or four times. It can also charge my phone like five times and it also has built-in fast charging. You can charge through regular USB or you can charge through USB-C. And that is something that I really like because a lot of my gadgets are now actually only USB-C. And when it comes to my SSD drives, I'm always carrying a USB-C cord in my backpack, so. This Pixel Pocket Rocket, which is basically an SD card wallet. And I really like this. It organizes my SD cards in a really neat way. And I try to keep it in my camera bag at all times so that I'm certain that I always have some kind of like SD card in the bag. Size baddest 85 millimeter f 1.8. Having a good 85 millimeter in your camera bag is always something that I highly recommend. And the reason that I have the size baddest one is because it has the built-in OSS of the lens, which basically makes it more steady when you're shooting video or when you're taking photos. And I also do like the look of this lens when you're shooting like at 1.8 and the micro contrast is just insane and another reason is also because it does have a weather sealing gasket here in the back which i highly like so that i can like use it when it's raining outside or if it's snowing or something like it because then you don't have to worry that your uh, glass or sensor is gonna break rocket blower always something that you must have in your camera bag polar pro nd filters for the dji mavic pro this is a kit of a circular polarizer nd8 and nd16 this always goes in my camera bag even though the drone is not always here but the reason that i have it is because if i bring the drone then i don't have to worry that i forgot the nd filters at home or something like that the sony a7r3 this is basically my main photo camera and all my thumbnails that i take and the photos that I do when I'm doing like any kind of lens testing is taken with this camera because it's a high resolution sensor and I mean like when you've used a sensor of 42 megapixels and then go down to like 24 you're gonna notice a huge difference in image quality but the files are huge when you're shooting with this camera if you're shooting uncompressed the files are like 82 megabytes which is way too big for me so I try to shoot in compressed raw when I'm using this to take any photos I always try try to keep two cameras in my camera bag and the reason for that is because if one camera was to break for example if I'm doing client job then I always can revert back to one of the other cameras and that is actually the reason why I bought the a7 III because the microphone input stopped working 
on my a7r3 so i had sent this off to repair and i had three planned jobs and no cameras so that is why i had to buy the a7 III. and now i have two cameras in the bag at all times to make sure that if one camera breaks then i can always revert back to the other one Okay, probably one of my favorite lenses of all time for the Sony cameras. And this is 16-35 f4. And the reason I like this so much is because the look that it gives you when you're shooting at those wide focal lengths. And this is also the lens that I'm using to shoot most of my videos here at the office or any kind of vlogs or any kind of like behind the scene of the behind the scene. And the biggest reason that I went for this lens and not the 16-35 2.8 is because the filter thread is 72 millimeters so it's not that expensive when you're buying a new filter for it but also because of the optical steady shot that the lens has so when you're doing any kind of like running gun vlogging or shooting anything handheld then you're gonna get way steadier footage with this lens than if you were to shoot without OSS. And then we also have the lens that I'm shooting with right now, which is the 24 millimeter 1.4 G Master lens that is at the time of recording, my favorite lens to use for both photos and videos right now. The reason I like this lens so much is because it is sharp, like from 1.4 all the way up to f16, it is razor sharp. And the focus ring is by far the best I've tried on any kind of Sony lens. And it makes it easy for you to actually like do some focus pulling with your thumb when you're shooting handheld video, which is totally dope. It also produces like this really nice blurred out background that I really like. And the autofocus is great as well. You don't hear a sound but when you're shooting video you don't want to go below like f 2.0 because if you do that it's gonna start hunting to like try to find the focus and try to find your eyes and stuff like that and yeah that is all that I have in my camera bag for 2020 I really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did please do give it a thumbs up because it's uh, highly appreciated so thank you so much and if you haven't subscribed I'm gonna put it, no, it's gonna be right here. This is still a call out, but it looks good to point at it, you know? So that's why I have it there. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. And uh, Peter from Sweden saying goodbye. <laughs>